Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of STEAM TV brought to you by the North Hastings Public Library. This week's video is on art. Now we're going to be learning about art through two really cool activities and uh, we'll learn about um, the different concepts demonstrated in these activities um, concerning STEAM. Uh, my name is Emma Defo and I work at the North Hastings Public Library and I'm very excited to bring you these activities today. For our first activity, we're going to be doing tie-dye tie towels. Now for this activity, you're going to need paper towels, like this one. I suggest the white and absorbent ones for the best results. You're going to need red, blue, and yellow food coloring. You're going to need three spoons uh, and some jars or glasses filled with some water. Now first we're going to put the food coloring into three separate into the three separate containers. Um, now the more food coloring you put into here, the more um, concentrated um, your color will be. This basically means um, it will be a, a deeper shade as opposed to if you used less food coloring. So you can just add the food coloring um, to your preferred color. I think that this looks pretty good, so we're going to take that one and set it aside and begin the yellow. So you just want to drip it in to your glass, just like so. And give it a stir. I'd like to add some more yellow just to make it a bit of a more concentrated, a more a brighter color. That looks pretty good to me. And we'll start on the red. Make sure to be careful with your food coloring as they will um, stain hands and surfaces. Now we're just going to add the red. And give it a stir. I'm going to add just a bit more. There, I'd say that looks pretty good. Make sure to cap your food coloring after you're done with it and set it to the side so you're not in danger of knocking it over. Next, we're going to take our paper towel and fold it as many times as we can or as many times as we would like to. Um, the more folds, you have the more um, of the tie-dye pattern there will be. You can fold it in squares or rectangles like this. You can fold it in circles or triangles, whatever you would like. Next, um, I suggest putting on some gloves just to protect your hands from any food coloring. And you can also see that I'm using a tray here to catch any um, excess. Now take your food coloring, lift it out with a spoon, and simply uh, drip it onto your paper towel. Now since my cups are a little bit small, I'm going to tip them sideways so I can get some more of the food coloring and water mixture onto my spoon, and then just put it onto the paper towel. So. You can see I put some on there. Now I'm going to take some red and do the same. Now my red has mixed with the yellow and you can see a sort of an orange over there. We'll talk a little bit more about why that happens later on. Now I'm going to take some blue and drip it on as well. Now you can see more colors are starting to come through. So now we've got some purple and on the back here we have some green. Now I'm going to flip it over because you can also still see some of the white paper towel on the back and I'm going to add some more yellow just to make sure everything is covered. 
And then once you're happy with your paper towel, you're going to unfold it. This might be a bit tricky with the gloves. I think it's going to take me a minute myself. Because you can already see such cool patterns emerging. Be very careful not to rip your paper towel as they can be uh, quite delicate when they are wet. And there you go. You can see the cool patterns on there, <laughs> although they do like to stick to each other. Once you've got it all unfolded, you can yeah, see how very cool that looks and hang it up somewhere to dry and I suggest putting a towel underneath it again because uh, if you look in my tray already you can see some food coloring over there so it, it does drip off as it dries uh, and then you'll want to once you've got it hung up you can carefully remove your gloves and Push your tray to the side for our next experiment. Before we begin the next experiment, I can show you some uh, paper towels I did previously that have already dried. So you can see how cool they look when they dry. So you can see the mixtures of the beautiful colors in there, and it's not just the three colors that we started with either, which is awesome. And I folded them all a little bit differently. So as you can see from here, this is one of my favorite ones. This was, um, I had some extra um, food coloring and water after I had finished all the other paper towels. So I dripped it, mixed them together and dripped them on here. And you can see it made a nice deep purple with blue and green on the edges. Very neat. Here's another one. Some really bright greens up in the top there. And there you go. Try folding them tons of different ways. There are so many ways you can do it and they all yield very cool looking results. Now I found this activity from this book that we have here in the library. Um, it's a reference book, um, which means you cannot take it home, but you can definitely use it to do STEAM activities here in the library. Um, and it also classifies the activities according to uh, the STEAM concepts they demonstrate. This one um, was classified as a science, art, and math activity. And the book shows you how to do the activity and then dives into the STEAM concepts you can learn from this activity, which we can do right now. So concerning art, the topic of this video, we can take a look at the color wheel. Now, according to Canva, the color wheel was invented in 1666 by Isaac Newton. This name might sound familiar to you for many reasons. Isaac Newton is one of history's greatest scientists, credited with many discoveries, including calculus and the laws of gravity and motion. Isaac Newton demonstrated that color is a quality of light. So to really understand color, we need to understand light. And according to Britannica, light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. Now, electromagnetic radiation is not the only, or uh, light is not the only form of electromagnetic radiation, but it is the only form that we can see. Um, now, the color spectrum, or the colors that we can see, um, is uh, the reflection of light and its arrangement according to frequency or the number of waves passing a fixed point in a specific amount of time and wavelength or the distance between the points of two waves side by side. Now Isaac Newton mapped the color spectrum into a circle, which we now call the color wheel. Now the color wheel is the basis of color theory as it shows the relationship between colors. 
Color theory is like a combination of art and science that is used to determine which colors look good together. Uh, much like musicians would choose a certain key or tempo to suit how they want their music to sound, artists use the color theory and the color wheel to help them find colors that will create the effect that they are going for. There are two types of color wheels. There is the RYB or red, yellow, blue color wheel, which is used by artists to help them combine paint colors. And there is the RGB or the red, green, blue color wheel, which is used online as it refers to mixing light as opposed to physical colors. So it is more suited to computers. Now on the color wheel, there are several different color combinations. There are complementary colors or colors that are on opposite sides of the color wheel. There are monochromatic colors, which are different tones and tints of a base color. So that would be like um, a dark blue and a light blue. They would be uh, tones or tints of that uh, blue. Um, there are analogous colors or three colors that are side by side on the color wheel. There are triadic colors or three colors that are evenly spaced on the color wheel and there are tetradic colors which are four colors that are evenly spaced on the color wheel. Now there are also primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. Now, the primary colors in the red, green, blue color wheel are red, green, and blue. And the primary colors in the RYB or red, yellow, blue color wheel are red, yellow, and blue. And the secondary colors um, in, we'll focus on the red, yellow, blue color wheel as we have that uh, displayed here, but the secondary colors in the red, yellow, blue color wheel are purple, orange, and green. Now we can see that perhaps best on this one. So we can see the purple here. So the purple is the combination of the red and the blue. You can see they're both on the outskirts of it there. We have the purple, where we have the purple. And then there's green, and you can see green all over here, um, but it's mainly concentrated over here where the blue and the yellow are meeting. And then we have the orange, which is right here where the red and the yellow are meeting, where they mix together. Um, and then there are tertiary colors, um, which on the red, yellow, blue color wheel are red, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, green, blue, green, and red, violet. So um, uh, you get tertiary colors by combining a secondary color with a primary color. So red with orange or yellow with orange, green with yellow, etc. Now we can move from art into science. Paper towels are made from trees, which absorb water through a process called capillary action. You may remember capillary action from the first episode of Steam TV, Science, where we talked about capillary action and its ability to open up the paper flower. Now capillary action is the ability of a liquid to flow upward through materials with a lot of small holes in them. So as you drip the colored water onto the paper towel, it spreads out quickly through the paper towel because of all the tiny holes. Um, regarding math, there is a lot of symmetry in our beautifully decorated paper towels. You can see that really well in this one. So if we fold it in half, you can see it looks nearly identical on both sides. Now symmetry is when you see the same image repeated along an axis or a straight line around which things are evenly arranged according to your dictionary. I've listed all these websites in the description below, by the way, so you can check them out. Um, and every time you fold the paper towel, you are creating a new axis. And when you drop color on the paper towel that's folded on these axes, you create symmetrical patterns, which are visible when you unfold the, the towel. Now you can see the line for this one would be right around the middle. And um, this one I folded um, again as well, like this. So there's another line of symmetry. And then I folded it like this back and forth. So you can see all these little lines of symmetry this creates when I fold it like this. 
into almost a fan. You can see just how many lines there are. For such a simple activity, there are a lot of complicated concepts demonstrated here, and even more that I haven't even gotten into in this video. So I highly uh, suggest you look up um, any questions you might have about this online. You can come in and use resources at the North Hastings Public Library as well. We have lots of math and science and art books, and we have activities concerning all of the STEAM concepts. Um, and if we don't have what you're looking for, uh, we have a large collection of ebooks uh, at our disposal, and there's always the internet. Now we can move on to our next activity. For this activity, we're going to be making color mixing tops. For this, you're going to need um, a hot glue gun. So parental supervision uh, is warranted. Um, you're going to need red, yellow, and blue paint, just like our, our primary colors here that we used for our earlier experiment. You're going to need a pen or a pencil, a paintbrush, um, some thin cardboard. I cut mine into a circle already. Uh, to do this, you just need some scissors and um, a circular object you can trace onto here. And then um, you're going to need a, a toothpick. And yes, that appears to be all. Now first you're going to trace um, the circle on your cardboard using your circle template. Uh, it can be a cup, a bowl, uh, I believe I use a, a pencil cup for this one. You just need something circular. Then carefully cut out your circle. Again, adult supervision is always recommended when using scissors. Um, then you're going to need to divide your circle into four equal sections. Now, if your circle looks something like mine, it's got a little picture on there. I suggest turning it over to the blank side. It's just easier to paint and it takes less time. And then what you're going to do is measure the width of your circle with your ruler. Now mine is about nine centimeters. Now nine divided by two, you're gonna to wanna to take your number divided by two uh, is 4.5. So I'm going to do just a little mark where that 4.5 line is. And it's difficult to see, but there is a little mark on there. And then I'm going to go in the opposite direction that I just measured and mark at 4.5 again. Now I have two marks, and I'm going to go off of those marks and draw two lines so I know where they meet. And then we have the center of the circle. Then you're just going to want to extend those lines so we can split our whole circle into quarters. Now a quarter is just um, it's a fourth of the area of your circle. So we can see that we have four even um, spaces inside the circle. Um, next, um, this part does get a bit tricky, but you wanna go to the center of your circle and just poke through a little hole for your toothpick, like so. Try not to go make too big of a hole because uh, the toothpick uh, won't fit. Um, then after we've got our hole, uh, just pick two primary colors. Um, I'm going to go with red and blue for this um, and try and get a really good yellow paint. I found that mine was, um, it wasn't opaque enough, uh, so it took a lot of coats. Um, but these paints worked wonderfully for me, so I'm just going to take them and just pour a little bit on here. Now we're painting sections, uh, the color in alternate sections. So you can see I'm going to paint these two blue and then these two red. And then we'll just be careful as we paint 
along the lines. And if you feel as though uh, gloves or a tray would be useful for this uh, to help minimize the amount of mess, please go ahead. Um, but I'm fairly careful when painting, so I feel pretty safe and I am using a paint that washes off skin pretty well. Clothing, not so much, but I'll make sure to take extra caution. Now, once I've filled in everything, that's what it should look like, the alternate sections. Now I'm just going to take a paper towel and wipe the paint off my brush. You can use water if you would like. And then it's time to paint with some red. Now put that in the sections where you do not have the blue. And paint away, making sure to stay relatively within the lines. Staying within the lines will just help this experiment to, um, to just uh, work a little bit cleaner if the colors are not already mixed as you're doing this. There you go, one side done. Now this site can be a bit tricky to work on without getting paint all over your hands, but I find it's always a little bit more fun if there's a bit of a mess. Now, um, since we talked about the, um, the different types of colors in the color wheel earlier, you might be able to guess what blue and red would make when mixed together. Now it should be um, purple, right? Um, but as you can see here, they're not mixing. Um, now we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. In the meantime, we've got some wet paint once you've finished your design. So just set it aside to dry for a little bit and clean up any mess that you might have in your area. Um, now I painted a circle beforehand, so you can see it here. And then what you do once uh, your circle is dry, I just put the toothpick through and I hot glued mine in place. If yours fits snugly enough, you don't have to, but I did um, because my hole was a little bit too big. And you're going to want to leave just a little bit of toothpick out at the end. So you can see there, just a little bit out at the end, not too much, and a fair amount on the top. And then it's a top, so you can just simply spin it like so. And um, as you can see, uh, there are some really cool steam concepts demonstrated here from the spinning of the top to the colors combining a little bit on uh, the surface of it. Um, now, firstly, we can see a lot of math in this activity from creating the circle to dividing the circle into even quarters. Now, what I was wondering is how such a large circle can spin on such a tiny little toothpick like that, how it can stay um, straight and um, spinning for so long. So I did some, some searching. Now according to Wonderpolis, when you spin a top, you are providing a force that converts the top's potential energy, which is basically how much energy it has uh, relative to a certain point that you're measuring it. In this case, I would measure it to the table. Um, and you can learn more about that uh, with our Newton's Cradle experiment available on our Instagram and Facebook, or you can always do some searching yourself on Google. Um, anyhow, it takes this potential energy and transforms it into kinetic energy or the energy that um, something has when it's in motion. 
As the top spins, it rotates around an invisible vertical axis, not unlike the axis we talked about before. Um, however, on the paper towel, it was more of an imaginary line of symmetry. This one um, is um, it's a straight line which an object rotates around. As a side note, um, concerning uh, an axis, have you ever wondered why we experience day and night? This is because as the Earth rotates on the axis, much like this top, um, we change our position relative to the sun. In the daytime, we are closer to the sun, and in the nighttime, we are farther away. And since the Earth rotates on an angle. So if we were up here on the top, we would be close to the sun. And as the Earth rotates down, the other side, in our case, closer to Australia, places like that, it's close to the sun and we are not. So we get nighttime. Anyhow, the physics principle of conservation of angular momentum states that the top, it would keep spinning forever because it is spinning on an axis. However, uh, this is not possible in our world because forces are always ac acting against um, the top, like friction, uh, which causes it to slow down, and gravity, which presses upon it and brings it back to the table, as well as imperfections in the design, from the way I glued it on the toothpick, um, to the way I cut out the circle, the way the paint dried and curved the circle, to just bringing it in my bag or carrying it, um, could have bent the edges, all that kind of stuff. The weight of the paint might not be even. There are tons of tiny little imperfections that can, um, in the design and the surface that it is spinning on as well, so on the table, that can slow it down. Uh, and But since the tops spin on such a tiny tip, the amount the amount of friction generated by its contact with the surface that it is spinning on is decreased because it's, it's so small. Um, this allows, uh, oh, sorry, eventually the friction will slow the top spin. And when this happens, we see another scientific principle called precession. Now, uh, according to Wonderopolis, as the top begins to wobble, it's harder to see on this one because it is so um, so wide, but as it begins to wobble, the axis of the top tilts to the side. Now this allows the force of gravity to exert a force called torque on the top. Torque creates an additional spin while causing the top to precess or spin outwards. Now, as the top continues to slow down, it precesses or swings outward faster in an attempt to conserve its total angular momentum. That's why the wobbling gets first gets worse right before the top falls. Now, we can look at the art aspect of this. The colors that we place onto the color mixing top are primary colors, which we learned about before. And when we combine two primary colors, we should get a secondary color. Um, when you use red and blue, like right here, you should get purple, red and yellow, you should get orange, blue and yellow, you should get green. Now, since the colors on the top aren't physically mixing, because they're, they're dry, and you can see here that they are separate, how are we seeing the creation of secondary colors? Now, this happens because of the speed that the top is spinning at. It's going so fast that it causes the colors to spin at so quickly that your brain is not able to process them as individual colors. So it, your brain takes a, a bit of a shortcut and it just processes them as the secondary color they create instead, which is why when this top spins, we see purple. Now, how cool is that? Such a tiny little project can demonstrate so many STEAM concepts, and there are so many more that I haven't even begun to touch on yet, which is again why you should always ask questions um, and do your best to find answers, and we can, of course, help you along the way. Now, as we close uh, our video today, um, I'd like to mention some places that you can find some answers. 
Now there are several Steam TV episodes up where I actually almost finished the series. We have our math one next week that you can watch and learn all about some super cool concepts. And we have completed science, technology, and engineering videos previously as well. So if you're interested in any of those topics or simply just have a, a curiosity that you would like to feed, um, I highly suggest checking out those videos. Um, uh, there are also resources available for borrow at the North Hastings Public Library that you can check out. We have tons of STEAM resources as well as an experiential learning collection with um, puzzles and math kits and Lego that you, and many other things that you can take home and check out and learn with. Um, there we have an Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Pinterest account so you can go on there and find some super cool resources as well um, and there are a bunch of websites in the description of this video that i used as well as some that i highly recommend that you can check out and learn more about concepts concerning the top and our super cool tie-dye paper towels and there's also always this book that you can come and check out and learn some more super cool steam uh, experiments and concepts. Um, thank you for watching this video and make sure to check out our video next week. I will see you later. Goodbye!